Story recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain a drama, fantasy, and mystery film called The Illusionist. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. A young Eisenheim walks through the fields and meets a traveling magician. The magician immediately enchants him with his parlor tricks, and Eisenheim's eyes sparkle in awe. In his room, Eisenheim starts practicing magic. The townsfolk judge him for being different. A girl from royalty, Sophie, is on horseback and lays her eyes on Eisenheim. She admires him not for his magic but for the person he is. They sit in the living room, and her caretakers barge in, interrupting the moment they're having. They're told that they're forbidden to interact with one another because Eisenheim is a peasant, and Sophie is royal blood. However, the distance makes the star-crossed lovers' hearts grow fonder. At a secluded cave, they make a promise to run away together and disappear. One day, Eisenheim gives Sophie a pendant in the shape of a heart. On the night of their escape, Eisenheim meets Sophie at the hidden cave. They hide within the shadows as guards come looking for Sophie. Sophie asks him to make them disappear. He tries, but the magic fails. They get separated that night, never to see each other again. Fifteen years later, Eisenheim, the now renowned magician, performs in Vienna. He borrows a handkerchief from a woman, puts it in a box, and returns it. He starts to handle an orange expertly while explaining the concept of time. He cuts it, removes its seed, and plants it in a pot. The seed starts to grow into a fruit-bearing tree before everyone's eyes. The handkerchief from before appears on stage while two butterflies carry it. The crowd showers him with applause and standing ovations. Inspector All is seen among the audience, thoroughly enjoying the performance. On the streets, unfortunate children approach him. He gives them money using tricks and goes on his way. He enters a cafe and talks to his manager, Joseph, about their earnings. Inspector All enters the theater and examines the stage, hoping to find out the tricks behind Eisenheim's magic. Eisenheim sees him touching his equipment and shouts for him to stop. All informs them that the crown prince will be watching his performance later that night. He analyzes Eisenheim's tricks and says his secrets are safe in the hands of a fellow magician. Eisenheim entertains all and even teaches him a trick. Leopold, the crown prince, enters the theater, and the performance begins. Eisenheim asks the audience what it means to die. He asks for a volunteer, but the crowd is reluctant. Leopold stands up and points to a woman beside him, she steps onto the stage, and Eisenheim hears someone call the woman Duchess von Tesken. The title that Sophie carried. Eisenheim's eyes are filled with shock as he realizes that this woman is the girl he loves. He asks if she knows him. She assures him that they haven't met before. His assistant helps her wear a robe, and they gaze at each other. He positions her, wears the hood over her head, and instructs her to do odd things. She bows to the mirror, but the image in the mirror doesn't bow back. Another person wearing a robe appears in the mirror and attacks the woman with a blade. Eisenheim directs a cloud of smoke, it passes through Sophie, making her briefly faint. The show ends with applause. Eisenheim later meets with the crown prince and Sophie. They greet one another, and Leopold asks if he has supernatural powers. He then tries to deduce the tricks behind the performance earlier, but Eisenheim neither says he's mistaken or correct. He invites him to perform for them at his mansion. As they leave, Eisenheim says something that only Sophie will recognize. She looks back at him, shocked. Joseph and Eisenheim gossip about Sophie marrying Leopold. Joseph adds, saying Sophie's unlucky because Leopold allegedly hurts women he's been with. Eisenheim receives a letter the next day. He rides his carriage, and Sophie secretly enters. He greets her, and she asks why he didn't say he knew her sooner. He explains that he did that for the same reason as to why they had to go through such secretive means to meet. Until now, Sophie is yet to receive true freedom. Eisenheim congratulates her for the upcoming wedding. She thanks him and says that Leopold is intelligent, and it would make sense that they marry because their lives are so intertwined. She also says that she wished that they would see each other again, but deep down, she wants to say that she hoped to leave with him back then. They finish their conversation, and he leaves. In her hand is the pendant he gave her. Unfortunately, the two were spotted, and all later reads a report about Eisenheim and Sophie being seen together. A man confronts Eisenheim and leads them to a restaurant where all eats. All questions Eisenheim about his relationship with Sophie. Eisenheim tries to remove any suspicion by being honest about them being childhood friends. All accepts his answer, but his doubts persist. He warns the magician of the crown prince's power and advises him to stay away from Sophie. At the royal mansion, Leopold introduces the magician to the distinguished audience. He says that what they may see tonight can seem unexplainable, but he assures that every mystery will be deciphered. Eisenheim starts the performance by drawing a picture of the emperor, who happens to be Leopold's father, with just a few gestures of his hand. Leopold stands and begins to explain what just happened. He pats Eisenheim down, trying to look for gadgets but fails to find any. The crowd reacts negatively because of the prince, so he challenges the magician to perform tricks without any props. He asks for the prince's sword. He then tells a story of the sword Excalibur. Like how it was set in stone, Leopold's sword stands upright on its own. The crowd is shocked, and just as how the unworthy cannot pull Excalibur, he dares anyone to take the sword. Many try, but no one prevails. The prince steps up and cannot lift it just like the others. The audience laughs at him. 
he finally pulls the sword on his second try. Eisenheim deems him worthy, and the audience gives their applause. However, Leopold is far from happy. Leopold leaves the room and instructs Inspector All to put a stop to the magician's business. On horseback, Sophie rides Eisenheim's home. She comes to inform him of the prince's plan to run him off the city. He argues with her, saying it doesn't matter if he leaves. The tension builds up between the two, and Eisenheim suddenly kisses her. Eisenheim pins her to the wall and starts to unbutton her shirt, revealing her pendant. During their pillow talk, they tell stories about their lives after the night they got separated. Eisenheim traveled the world while Sophie stayed sheltered. She opens up about Leopold's plans to overthrow his father. He worries about what could happen to her and suggests that she comes with him and disappear just as how they planned when they were young. However, Sophie fears that Leopold will find and kill them. Morning comes, and Eisenheim sees his poster destroyed on his way to the theater. Out of frustration, Joseph berates Eisenheim for provoking the prince. Eisenheim ignores Joseph and asks for his profits. At the bank, he retrieves all his cash. He organizes his suitcase and walks down the streets. He approaches a carriage, leaves the suitcase, and gets a kiss from Sophie. A man hiding from afar witnesses all of this and reports his finding to Inspector All. All arrives at the train station. He spies on Eisenheim and an old man talking about the plan to escape with Sophie. All reports his findings to the prince. Leopold thanks him, showing no signs of anger. Sophie marches restlessly in a room, waiting for Leopold. He confronts her, being as upfront as possible with what he knows. She doesn't deny it, causing Leopold to snap at her, showing the misogynistic and narcissistic man he is. Sophie stays calm and says that she will not marry him. He slaps her and threatens to do much worse if she continues her behavior. With a calm face, he commands her to ready her bags for their trip to Budapest. However, she bids farewell and hurries outside. Leopold catches up to her and strikes her with his sword. She rides the horse unconscious. Eisenheim looks at his clock and realizes that Sophie is late. Morning comes, Sophie's horse walks down the street with her nowhere to be seen. A man inspects the horse and sees bloodstains. A group of people searches for the Duchess. A man sees her floating on the river, stuck in a tree. Eisenheim jumps in the river, and there in his arms is a lifeless Sophie. All inspects Sophie's dead body. The doctor interrupts him, saying that he will not stand for the disrespect he's doing. As he's about to leave, the doctor informs him about a gemstone found in Sophie's pockets. Eisenheim confronts All saying that they both know the prince killed Sophie. All defends Leopold and says he can't have killed her since he's in Budapest. Trying not to cry, Eisenheim explains that the prince killed her because she was leaving him. However, All stands his ground. He asks Eisenheim to stop accusing the prince or else he'll end up in jail. All leaves the scene and continues the investigation. He arrives at the mansion and looks in the stables. He sees a shiny object under the hay but doesn't get the chance to grab it as the prince arrives. Leopold asks All if he has a suspect, remarkably hiding the fact that he killed her. Eisenheim receives news that the police have arrested the man who killed Sophie. However, he's not satisfied and still thinks Leopold killed her. Some time passes, and he buys a rundown theater, fires his manager, and completely reimagines his shows. The day of the reopening came. A packed theater watches as the magician sits down and stares at them intently. He gestures his hand, and an image of a man suddenly appears. A man from the audience communicates with him. The audience assumes he's dead and asks him how he got there and what he knows about the other side. He doesn't know what to say, and Eisenheim stops the show. The show starts to grow more controversial, and a cult following forms. The news reaches Leopold, but he doesn't show any concern. He says Eisenheim is a fake and commands all to find out how he does his trick and arrest him. The inspector hypothesizes that he's using a projector, but it doesn't replicate the lifelike movement of the images. The show attracts more attention as the apparitions grow more realistic. All and the guards take Eisenheim to his office. He asks him how he does his new trick. Eisenheim reminds the inspector that a magician never reveals his secrets. Their conversation gets interrupted by All's second-in-command saying that he should look out the window. A group of people stands there looking menacingly. All then accuses Eisenheim of planning to overthrow the prince. Eisenheim says his plans are far from that. All reminds him that they already caught the murderer. However, he says they both know that isn't true. Eisenheim shows himself to the crowd outside. He confesses that the apparitions are only tricks. He isn't able to bring people back from the dead and apologizes for misleading them. He pleads for them to go home, and the disappointed crowd follows. All is satisfied with what happened and lets him leave. After a while, he reports to Leopold. Leopold is disappointed, scolding All and calling him an untrustworthy fool. The prince leaves and plans to put an end to Eisenheim personally. Wearing a disguise, he walks through the town blending in with the common folk. Leopold enters the theater and sits to watch Eisenheim perform. To his surprise, Eisenheim summons Sophie's spirit. She gazes at Eisenheim, seeming as though she is real. The audience asks who murdered her, and Leopold sits anxiously. Sophie announces that her murder is present among the audience. Multiple voices from the crowd shout that the crown prince killed her. Luckily, they're unaware of Leopold's presence. Sophie vanishes, and the show ends. In the carriage, the prince remains skeptical, saying that the apparition doesn't even look like Sophie. 
He accuses the magician of manipulating the audience, clearly showing that he's bothered by what happened. In the next show, the prince commands all to arrest Eisenheim. All meets with Eisenheim. He tells him that he doesn't want to arrest him, however, he'd have no other choice but to do so if he continues with his act. Sophie's death left Eisenheim broken as he says that he's only doing this to be with her, even for a short moment. Guards surround the building, and a familiar face accompanies Eisenheim. He gives Joseph the right to all his assets, and Joseph agrees without hesitation. Eisenheim sits in front of a crowd. It's completely silent as all eyes are on him. Sophie then appears next to him. People from the audience start accusing the prince of murdering her. Inspector all approaches him, and guards surround the platform. He announces that he'll be arresting Eisenheim. The audience is outraged, shouting in disagreement. When all tries to grab Eisenheim, all's hands go through Eisenheim. He has turned himself into an apparition and disappears into thin air. The guards start to look for him in every corner of the theater, but he's nowhere to be found. They rummage through his home, and there all notices a book titled Orange Tree. He opens it to see the sketches of Sophie's pendant. He takes another look and realizes something. He visits the barn where Sophie was murdered and finds the pendant underneath the hay. He figures out how to open it, and he sees the picture of Eisenheim from before. Beside it, he sees a gemstone. He recognizes the gemstone as one of the gems on Leopold's sword. All then meets with Leopold, accusing him of murdering Sophie. The prince is as arrogant as ever as he says that all has no right to steal from his property. However, all informs him that he has already said everything to the emperor, including Leopold's plan to overthrow him. As a final attempt to change all's mind, he says that Eisenheim has tricked him and that all of this is Eisenheim's doing. All stands his ground, saying that there's a truth behind the magician's illusions. Feeling desperate, Leopold grabs his gun and threatens to shoot all. However, he gets interrupted as he sees officers sent by the emperor approach the mansion. Leopold feels helpless and locks all the doors, hoping that this would buy him enough time to think of something. He shouts to all that all his sacrifices will be for nothing, saying that he only wants the best for the nation. The banging on the doors triggers him, and with his finger on the trigger, he shoots himself. Time passes, and the newly promoted all walks down the street, and a child approaches him. The child gives him a document that explains the mechanism behind the orange tree trick. He looks around and runs after a man that's obviously in disguise. It's Eisenheim, well and alive. All arrives at the train station, missing the magician. All experiences a moment of revelation as he pieces everything together. From the beginning, Eisenheim had planned all of this, meticulously getting every detail right, ensuring his planned success. All remembers the gemstones Eisenheim must have grabbed when he borrowed Leopold's sword, the old man he was talking to who happened to be the doctor that examined Sophie, and up to the faking of Sophie's death. Planting all of these ideas into All's head, making him think that he got close to the truth, not realizing that the magician was a step ahead of him the entire time. All can't help but laugh and clap to the unbelievable performance he became a part of. Eisenheim then walks through the meadows to celebrate with a living Sophie as they've now fulfilled their promise to run away and disappear together. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.